Hi everybody and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today's video will be kind of short because I've just got a quick concept that I want to impress upon you and I don't think it'll take that long to tell you the truth. I remember the first time that I became aware of this concept and it was in college and I was watching somebody else sight read something and there were all these complicated chords, all these altered dominant chords and and the kid that I was watching play the piano was just nailing them like super fast, like rootless voicings, two-handed, beautiful. And I had to say to him like, how are you getting these voicings so quickly? It always takes me a second to figure out how to voice them. When I say voice them, I mean, which order to put the notes in, you know? And he was like, oh, well, he's like, you know, you see C7 with a sharp nine and you just play the third and seven with an E flat triad over the top, boom. And then he's like, if you see a C13 with a sharp 11, it's just same thing, third and seven, but you got a D triad on top. And he showed me like six or seven different voicings right there, all using thirds and sevens with the left hand and triads with the right hand. And that's the way he thought about chords. I kind of wished that somebody had taught me that way. I don't know in hindsight if I wish that, but at the time I did because man, he was nailing those chords a lot faster than I was. And somehow he had memorized them a lot better than I had. So I'd like to take you over to the piano. You can learn to play like Jeremy Matthews, um, also like Bill Evans and, uh, Keith Jarrett, and many, many other piano players who have utilized upper structures in their playing for decades and decades. Let's do it. There's a few upper structures right off the bat using the tune Beautiful Love. I want to teach you about what these are. Upper structures come from triads that you can make out of notes that are above the seven. So if we're talking about C7, we get these extensions, right? We have the nine, we've got 11 or sharp 11 and 13. We also have flat nine, sharp nine, flat five, sharp five, or you can call you can call it sharp 11 or flat 13, depending on how it's spelled. But we have all of these possibilities with notes that are beyond these four notes. And like I said, you can see the name of a chord, bam, maybe it's C13 flat nine. And if you know this trick, you know that the flat nine is here, the 13 is there, and you can play this chord by playing basically C7 on the bottom and A major on the top. You see how that happens? So we've got the basic structure of C7, but we have flat 9, 3, and 13. Now, you might ask me why we're doubling the 3. Sometimes in these upper structure triads, we are going to double one of the notes that we've got down here. And it's just kind of the nature of the beast, but doubling tends not to be a problem so much when you've got a triad going on. Any kind of triad, our ears loves. We like, we just love triads. And so anytime you hear one of these beautiful extensions, even though they might have some crazy name associated with them. As long as we're talking about triads on the top, our ears are gonna love them. They're gonna like make room for them in the harmony. And also as long as we resolve them in a pleasing way or a way that is close to where we've come from and where, where we're going. All right, so I wanna tell you how I think about this. The easiest way I think for me to get it across is to take a C7, that's our basic framework of C7, right? Like a shell voicing. Um, we have the third, which makes it dominant. The, the flat seven that makes it dominant also. Change either one of these and we've got some different kind of chord. So they're the most important notes. We've got root, third and seven. And later on, if we've got a bass player, we can drop that root and only play third and seven. And we can play three or seven in either inversion. We can kind of explore together triads that will work over this three and seven or this tritone to be some kind of C7. 
Of course, this one will work, but it's really, really boring. Now, let's just go up a half step and see if it would work. Any time that we have an F in, in one of these trials that we're making, it's going to be no bueno because if we've got an F, all of a sudden it's not a dominant seventh chord anymore. It would be some kind of a sus chord. Plus, we have this horrible interval of a minor ninth, which is just really hard to work with almost all the time. So D flat is not an option. Those two notes would have been cool, right? It's the flat nine and it's the sharp five, but the F is no good. Now, how about if instead we decided to do a minor triad, D flat minor? Yeah, that's really hip and it works. But right now we're talking about major triads. Okay, so let's try the next one up. Instead of D flat, which we have just seen does not work, let's try D. Ooh, it sounds great, doesn't it? And I think you've already seen me play it today. We've got nine, sharp 11, and 13. So this is that chord I was telling you about, C13 with a sharp 11. It's awesome. All right, so, so far, I mean, we've got this boring one. We've got this very interesting one. Let's raise this and see what happens. This might look problematic for you because it looks like it's the minor third, but when it happens up here above the seventh, instead of thinking about it like a third, we can think about it like a nine. So it's the sharp nine. And it's, it's a great sound. I mean, it's the, it's the Hendrix chord. You, you hear it a lot in popular music as well as in jazz. It's a crunchy chord and a really cool chord. Now, if we have this G, that's the five, which is fine. And then we're doubling, we've got the flat seven again. So this is the most exciting part of this upper structure, but it works great. All right, now let's try an E major chord. Anytime we're gonna see a B note in all of these choices we're trying out, it's gonna be a problem because this would make it a major seven chord. We don't wanna mess with three and seven in that way. Like we don't wanna mess with this note, we don't wanna mess with this note. Actually, those happen to be another tritone, don't they? Check it out. We also get that terrible minor ninth interval. So any chord that ends up having an F or a B in it is one that we don't wanna use. We just should know it automatically. So we've got C, we've got D, we've got E flat, and we do not have E, we can't have F, right? It's got an F. Let's try F sharp. How about that one? Now we're getting a little bit far spaced here in our voicing, so I might, if I was gonna use that one, I'd probably play it in this inversion. F sharp triad, major triad. How about flat nine, flat five, and then that minor seventh or dominant seventh. It's a great sound, so anytime you've got C7, flat five, flat nine, you can think, all right, what is, you know, a tritone away from C, it's F sharp, there you go. All right, next one, G, no good, because it's got a B in it. How about A flat? Let's check it, let's, let's put it in another inversion, because again, we want to space this sounding like a stack. Dude, my chords are stacked. All right, sharp nine, sharp five, and root. Great sounding chord. Let's check out what happens if we try A major. We're doubling that three. We've got the 13 in there, which is really cool. And we've got the flat nine. That one works as well. All right, now how about B flat? Uh, no good, because we've got an F in there. How about B? No good, because we've got a B in there. So all of a sudden, we have many options for triads to play over that tritone or three in dominant seven of C7. All right, let's check it out looking at it like this. I've got my little whiteboard. I have crossed off every triad that we've just said won't work. And let's just start to name the ones that do work. So C triad over that tritone in the, on the bottom is just C7. If we have D, like I said, we're gonna call this D13 sharp 11. E flat will work, right? It's C7 with a sharp nine. F sharp will work. We've got C7 with a flat nine and also a flat five. So we always wanna write the lower number first. There we go. 
A flat, I'm gonna have C7 with the notes A flat, C, and E flat. So that is sharp five and sharp nine. Very cool. A, A is the 13, right? And then that third note in the A triad is a C sharp or the flat nine. I know it might be a lot to wrap your head around. Um, all right, so since this is the A and that's the, the 13th, we've got C13 with a flat nine. And now we've got how many chords? We've got one, two, three, four, five super cool chords that we can make using triads it's over that third and seven. Now, another thing to consider is that we could take minor triads and see what else we can come up with. So let's do that really quickly. Here we go again, C minor. What does that give us? Gives us a sharp nine chord, not bad. All right. So we've got that one. Now let's try D flat minor. Hey, this one seems like it'll work. It doesn't have that pesky F in it, right? So we've got flat nine and sharp five. Now that's a combination that we didn't have above. Very cool. All right, so by using D flat minor, we can get flat nine, sharp five. Now, if we do D minor, no good, because we've got an F. How about E flat minor? This would give us the sharp nine and the flat five, which is also a combination we didn't get before. So E flat minor gives us flat five, sharp nine. E minor would give us a B natural. That's no good. F minor would give us the F. How about F sharp minor? That would give us flat five, 13 and flat nine. Very cool. We'd probably put it here. I love that one. That gives us C13 with a flat five and a flat nine. If you look above, we already had this one, but without the A in it, right? F sharp gave us C7 with a flat five and a flat nine, but not with the 13. G minor, that works out just fine. It's, it's also kind of boring, but it's just a C9. A flat minor doesn't work because it has that major seven of C in it. Um, a minor, that works fine. C13. B flat minor has an F in it, so no good. B minor has a B in it, so no good. So look at that. By looking for minor triads as upper structures, we've come up with one, two, three, four, five, six more iterations of C7. That's crazy, right? All of a sudden, we, we've got 11 really cool chords that we can build simply by trying out triads. So like I said, my friend Jeremy, he had them all memorized and he could just play them at the drop of a hat. I don't know if my brain would have worked better this way had I been taught this way. I kind of wasn't taught this way. I, I was kind of self-taught. So if I saw C13, I was going to play it like this. And if I saw a C13 with a flat nine, I would just flat the nine or sharp the nine, right? or flat the five or sharp the five, just keeping my third and seven and thinking about them one at a time like that. And it's a, I mean, it's a vibe, it's a sound, and, and my playing has that sound in it, and so do a lot of other jazz piano players, but it doesn't mean you have to learn one or the other. Uh, I've got both now. I've, I, I have learned to, to think about all of these kinds of voicings in my own playing. And I love to use these upper structures. I hope that you will too. Thanks for hanging out, learning about upper structures with me. I hope it helps your playing. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me over on Instagram too. I'm uploading to Instagram just about every day now and lots of just fun little short lessons. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.